In today's video, we are gonna go over how to target the kind of the upper back and really a lot of the muscles that move the arm backwards or what we call shoulder extension. Now, why is this so important? For any of you who've had a neurologic injury and you've either spent some prolonged time in the hospital in a hospital bed or you've been sitting more than you typically sit, a lot of times we just kind of work in this area right here. And it's very, very hard to work a lot of the muscles that bring the arms backwards, so they get neglected. But we're gonna change all that today because that is going to be the focus of the exercises in today's video. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more mobile, more active, pain-free, happier, healthier life. And all that said, today let's first go over why we're going to work these muscles a little bit and kind of why we're going to do it in a few different positions. So first, why are these muscles so important? Well, of course, pulling open a door, you really need to be able to extend that arm, reaching into your back pocket, you really need to be able to extend that arm, putting on a jacket, you need to kind of get that arm back behind you. For some of you, although this isn't the preferred method to get up out of a chair, you have to be able to pull up in some cases to get out of a low chair. And those are just a few examples of why we need to have that ability to reach our arms backwards. Now, why might you not be able to do that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, one is, is that the position that you've been in, a lot of the muscles on the front have just gotten tight. And when those are, muscles are tight, they kind of resist that motion or that ability to be able to move backwards. The other reason is that some of you that have had a neurologic injury, you have some spasticity, a lot of times the muscles that become a little bit spastic or where you get that involuntary contraction kind of pull that arm forward and draw it up towards you. So that might be a reason, reason that when you've tried to relearn how to reach your arm back, you just have all that resistance pulling your arm forward. So if you notice that your arm kind of rests in this position, that would be an ideal reason to maybe incorporate some of these exercises into your program. And for some of you, you have what we call like an abnormal synergy pattern. Like I mentioned earlier, where that arm kind of flexes up and internally rotates. So when you try, potentially some of you, try and reach backwards, that arm draws up and it doesn't actually move back behind your trunk. So some of you will show me and you can kind of say, yeah, see my arm goes backwards. But if you turned sideways, you would kind of see that the arm's really just coming up and it's not really going past your trunk behind you. Sometimes that's just a result of just kind of muscle groups abnormally linking up together after a stroke or a brain injury where again, it just has a tendency to kind of draw up. So if you notice that's happening with you, then again, some of these exercises would be perfect. But now, a little bit more rationale that's gonna help to understand what exercises we're gonna go into and why you might wanna choose one over the other. We're gonna do some exercises with the elbow bent. We're gonna do some exercises with the elbow straight. That's just because it uses a little bit of a different combination of muscles. So you might be able to do it with one and not the other. So I always recommend that you do a little bit of both. Sometimes you do it with the arm bent. Some of them you do with the arm straight. But more important for some of you, if you notice that when you stand or your walk or walk, your arm just locks out straight. So some of you that happens, that is sometimes a indication that you have some like abnormal uh, synergy patterns or muscles linking up abnormally together. And if you notice that, I would recommend that you do probably focus more on some of the ones that we're going to do with the arm bent. That's what we call breaking up an abnormal synergy pattern. So hopefully that all makes sense and will help you to kind of decide which exercises that we go through today are going to be best for you. Now, as usual, if you guys have been around recently, you've noticed that I've been putting a link for a handout in the description below. We're gonna do that again today. So for those of you that are new, 
If you click on the first link in the description below this video, you can get a PDF handout of all the exercises that we're gonna go through today, which means that you don't have to keep coming back to this video. So if you see one or two exercises that you think you wanna incorporate into your home exercise program, if you click on the link and download the handout, you will get a picture of the exercise with a description on how to do the exercise so that you don't have to keep coming back to this video. And then in addition to that, as I've been doing recently, you will see timestamps in the description below so that you can, when you come back to this video, you can click on the exercise that you wanna see and it'll take you to the time in the video that has that specific exercise. So use the handout, the description on the handout doesn't make a lot of sense, come back to the video and you can go directly to that exercise. So now that we got all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the exercises. So for this exercise, we're starting out pretty easy. Arm is supported on a surface. If you're someone that does have a lot of uh, flexor tone or your arm tends to pull in, I highly recommend that you start with something where your arm is supported. It just helps to kind of relax the arm a little bit and you won't get so much of that resistance kind of pulling your arm in the opposite direction. But with your arm supported on a towel or something just to make it a little bit easier to slide, you're just gonna rest your arm and just pull your elbow back, almost like you're trying to elbow someone behind you. Now, try to pay attention that your arm isn't pulling in. If it is, just take your other hand and just kind of put it right here and just kind of like stop it, kind of block it from pulling in. So arm right here and just kind of guide it. You don't really have to push it or try not to push it unless you absolutely have to, but just try to keep it, prevent it from doing this. So just pull back. Again, like your elbow, someone elbowing someone behind you. All right, and once you get pretty good at that, you can go to adding a resistance band and just pulling back. Now, if you can do this with a resistance band, this is where you're gonna wanna start incorporating arm bent and arm straight. With that said, in addition to doing it this way, also you wanna bring your arm down and pull it straight back. Now, if you don't have something to attach a TheraBand to, you can use these TheraBand loops. They're very cheap. I will put a link for these in the description below. And you can just kind of hold it out with your stronger arm and pull back. Or hold it out with like the kind of the non-working arm and use the other hand to pull back. Now, this is just another alternative to doing the row. If you don't have anything, again, if you don't have anything to attach the TheraBand to, you can just put it around your other foot if you can get into this position. So some of you will be able to do this. If you don't have grip strength, just kind of wrap the band a few times around your hand. You know, just kind of secure it to your fingers. And then same thing. and pull back. All right, and then also you can do it, same thing with the arm straight. All right, another variation is to do it with a dumbbell and kind of bend over. I usually, I like to use, usually put the other leg up just to kind of keep me stabilized and you're going to pull your elbow up towards the ceiling. If you can't stand, you can go ahead and sit and just bend over and same thing, pull that arm back up towards the ceiling. And then in both of those positions, make sure you also do this with the arms straight. Now, for those of you that have had a stroke, this is a particularly hard exercise to do uh, just because a lot of the abnormal synergy patterns, but people just really seem to have a hard time with uh, lifting the hand off of the back. But it is important, especially if you're trying to get back to the point where you can kind of reach your hand into a back pocket. So 
don't give up on this one. A lot of you probably learned this in therapy, but it isn't. So for a lot of you, it will be a review, but you're going to start with putting your hand behind your back, which that alone might be hard for some of you. But if you can get your hand back kind of by your back pocket or where a back pocket would be if you had some pants on, you're just going to put your hand there and you're just going to try and lift that hand off. If you can do that, the next challenging position would kind of be to do that against gravity. And then for those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I often talk about the fact that we don't ever work a muscle group or a motion in isolation. We're usually trying to get back to incorporating these movements into actual functional activities. So I always recommend that you follow up with some sort of functional activity. So the, I like this position of the legs when you work on that shoulder extension because it does kind of tap into like the muscle groups that work together when we do normal walking. So it's not essential, but there might be some carryover into walking and for some of you being able to keep your arm down because I know a lot of you worry about that because you tell me about it for those of you that I see in person, but being able to keep the arm down or be able to swing that arm backwards is really hard when you're standing. So the uninvolved leg is going to be down. You're going to bring the involved leg up. And then you're just going to row back. And again, I recommend you do it in both positions. Elbow bent, 